first um, this is a video that shows you my bow tie antennas well if you if you check other YouTube channel YouTube channels you see something very different from what I have mine is the cheapest you can get uh, instead of using cloth hanger I'm using aluminum foil so you can see a lot of layers of aluminum foil I'm using also tapes uh, plastic tapes uh, and cardboard and some clamps and you see uh, this is something known as uh, antenna transformer I have two of them because I have two antennas and then I have a switch this is called antenna switch uh, this is the cheapest you can get GE or you can get RCA it doesn't matter uh, that's about six dollars these I bought from eBay the uh, antenna transformers I think it's they are from Hong Kong and it's a dollar fifty nine for two pieces instead of one okay clams pretty inexpensive I guess maybe fifteen or twenty five cents per piece so the total cost excluding the um, the coaxial cables the total cost probably is around seven bucks or at most eight bucks I don't know who cares seven dollars to be frank so uh, you can see uh, the two coaxial cables merging into this switch here and then I have this coaxial cable leading to the television so there's no trick I mean it's, uh, it's not a trick I mean it's, it's real okay so for seven bucks you can I can get 20 something channels uh, as far as 60 miles from here 60 miles not six miles <laughs> um, so let me try to explain why I have here and then let me try to uh, tell you what happens when when I change the positions and so on and so forth uh, this is not the final version because I'm going to uh, build a rack and then hang these two antennas so that they won't be jamming each other and so on and so forth All right, so here I have two antennas and this is 14.6 inch and 14.6 inches 14.6 right, so inches here 14.6 inches here and this one is about 8 inches each All right. so these are triangles that I cut uh, first of all let me explain how I do it uh, I use aluminum foil, regular aluminum foil from the kitchen, and I folded them. Fo I folded the aluminum foils to to uh, to uh, make two triangles. Okay. Uh, I cut them using well, you can cut them using um, regular scissors. Uh, what's the angle here? Uh, it doesn't matter. There are studies showing that whether the angle is t 22 degrees or 50 degrees, it will have some effect, but not huge effects. Uh, you can try different angles to see whether they fit you because um, it's relatively inexpensive I mean um, anyway so let me try to explain why I have here uh, I have two major transmission towers I'm right at the rim of Corvallis Oregon so uh, this direction is pointing to this direction is actually pointing to uh, north no Southeast. This is the southeast direction. Right. So I'm here. I'm pointing at Eugene. So, but then the problem is, you see, a lot, a lot of, I, have, I have a lot of obstacles. I have a fence here. I have trees. I have a house over here. I have a small barn over there. I have a forest right in front of me. You can see the forest. Uh, on the top of it, I also have. A small hill you can see the um, the pine trees at the top and that's a hill so everything is unfavorable and Eugene is 53 miles from my home and the other direction well of course I have uh, some local stations in Corvallis uh, three OPB stations and three other channels that now I cannot receive I don't know why I used to be able to receive them using just one antenna but then now I think they have some conflict with the uh, with the channels and that 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 direction is 
northeast. Right, then you can see uh, Highway 99 over there. And that's Highway 99. Yep, right here. And the Highway 99, that's Portland. Okay, so let me go back. So Portland has a lot more stations. So I made, I created this antenna specializing, uh, pointing particularly in the Portland direction so that can receive a lot more channels. And this small antenna will pick up some channels from Eugene. Uh, strange enough, this, this guy, even though it's pointing at the wrong direction, will sometimes be able to pick up some Portland channels, two of them, 49.1 and 49.2. Um, I don't know why. But this, this guy mainly will pick up three additional channels from Eugene. If you don't want it, forget about it. I already have 21 channels or 22 channels from that bigger, bigger one. So why is it bigger? Well, 14.6 inches is actually the half wavelength of the average frequency of the station that I would like to pick up. Okay. Why 14.6 inches? Well, there's a formula of 467 divided by the frequency of the, of the, um, of the, uh, of the station you want to target at. So the main station you want to target at. For example, uh, the station may have a frequency of 500 megahertz. Uh, don't worry about the megahertz, so it's 500. So 467 divided by 500 will, get, will give you a, a little bit more than a foot. Oh, okay, uh, a little bit less than a foot. Right? But that's the UHF frequency. Right? This is not uh, targeting at 500. Instead, it's targeting at 100 something because 100 something is the VHF frequency that is more difficult to pick up. Right? So, for example, I'm uh, you have 467 divided by 200. Uh, in, other, in other words, 200 is the mag in megahertz. Okay? 467 divided by 200 gives you 2 point something feet. That's the half wave thing. Well, but 2 point something feet for one side is way too long. I mean, it's like 5 feet altogether. So instead of ha doing the uh, half wave thing, I'm doing the quarter wave thing. Okay? So I divide it by 2 to get 14.6 inches. VHF frequencies are more difficult to pick up because of the length. Okay? So for example, if I use this eight inch antenna for each side, okay, if I use this small antenna to try to pick up the, uh, the uh, VHF signals, it's difficult. Okay? There are several things you need to take care, uh, uh, you need to remember. Okay? So first of all, what kind of metals should I use for the triangles? Well, silver is the best, and then copper, and then aluminum. Well, aluminum for is actually uh, aluminum is actually better than steel in terms of conductivity and in terms of a smaller impedance. Impedance, right? impedance is uh, the equivalence of resistance. Uh, impedance is for AC current. AC current means the current is going back and forth. Uh, resistance is more for DC current. Okay, so this is this has a low impedance and high conductivity. Uh, first, of, first of all, pick your metal. Right? If it is convenient for you, if you have a copper sheet, do the copper sheet. Don't do aluminum foil. Aluminum foil. Uh, if it is steel plate that you have, uh, well, use steel plate. But aluminum foil is all is always available in the kitchen. Right? See, in any case, uh, aluminum, aluminum is the choice I made. I made. The second factor, besides the metal uh, the, that you choose, that will affect the conductivity and, and impedance of your antenna is, is the thickness. Okay, the thickness. The thicker it is, the higher the conduct conductivity is, the lower the impedance will be. Uh, thickness, so in order to make it thicker, you just need to fold more aluminum foil to make it, okay? So you can make it uh, here, I, I think I have like eight layers or six, I don't know. 
if you want a stronger antenna you have more layers okay. but it's up to you uh, if you want to waste a lot of aluminum foil without your wife complaining go ahead in any case uh, thickness and surface area I did not do a good job in terms of making the surface larger because I could have each layer being insulated so instead of just having a whole sheet I can have something in between each sheet and they will create a much larger surface area the larger the surface area the more current will flow uh, the, the smaller the impedance the higher the conductivity uh, you always want a higher conductivity and smaller impedance okay um, well but you, you only have one metal plate to use it because it's cheapest okay so you need to worry about the cost and the time that you you spend on making this because you because even after uh, the, 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 the time that you spend on this antenna is not in uh, making it it's but but in tuning it uh, changing the direction and so on and so forth that is very time consuming okay so um, so that so much about the theory uh, okay thickness surface area and so on and so forth right? and the frequency that you want to target at half wave length and so on so I'll be I'll, I'll be putting some more information uh, down below so that you guys can follow uh, because everyone has a very different situation depending on the channels uh, the, the frequency of the channels they want to have and they want to receive and so on and so forth in any case all right so uh, let me let me um, show you the result all right seven bucks so here I have channel two two one which is a local channel and then two two so two if you normally if you receive two one you should be able to receive two one and two three uh, two one two two and two three so uh, OPP is, is the local channel it doesn't matter what kind of antenna you use you just use the two pieces of wire you'll be able to receive OPP because it's very close to here probably 15 miles and then 7273 is an FM channel and then uh, radio channel 8-1 sometimes I may not be able to get it actually I will be able to get it but then the the direction or the pointing the 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 direction that I have to point to will be very different from here because I want to receive channel 2 uh, more than channel 8 okay anyway channel 8 I cannot receive so, well, but if I adjust the, the uh, direction I will be able to receive channel 9 one two three uh, two channels so I already have uh, three four two channel two three four channel seven six plus two is eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen Channel 16, I have to rely on the smaller channel because it's pointing at the Eugene direction, which is opposite, almost opposite to the. Um, well, let me let me tell you something something more. Um, this is actually not a unidirectional uh, uh, antenna. This is something known as bidirectional. I can receive signal from here, and you can receive signal from there, right? But then Eugene is not south. Uh, well. Portland is pointing in the northeast direction, so the opposite is southwest. But Eugene is not in the southwest direction. Eugene is in the southeast direction, so I cannot use one antenna to tackle two places, two directions, even though it's known as bidirectional. <laughs> well, bidirectional here I don't mean truly bidirectional because even if there is some wave coming from here or there, it will be able to pick up, but then it will not be as strong or as good. Uh, since Eugene is 53 miles from here, phew, tough luck. I cannot use one antenna. Uh, 16 channel 16, I cannot receive. How many channels do I have? Ah, I forgot. Maybe 11. Channel 22 has seven. So uh, some shopping channels. Twenty-seven is a local channel. I, I don't know why, how come I cannot. I don't know the reason why I cannot 
receive it now. I used to be able to receive it using just two sticks, two pieces of metal. 36, 41, uh, 49, 1 is the Portland, Portland channel. I have to change the direction of that channel, otherwise I will not be able to receive it. It's much better for me to use the smaller antenna because of the frequency, but even with that one, I need to adjust the position, so uh, I don't know. I may not be uh, using it. Uh, so, so much for the large antenna. So now I have to switch it to the small antenna by doing this. Okay. So you can see uh, the uh, channels being picked up uh, a bit different. I will not be able to pick up some of the channels. So channel 2, I can no longer pick up. Channel 7, which is the local channel, very close to here, it doesn't matter what kind of, what kind of uh, antenna I use, I will be always be able to pick it, pick, it up, pick it up. Channel 8, no, no, no luck. So, while I'm using it, well, channel 9, I can still pick up. 12, not really. 13, yes. It depends on how strong and ex the exact direction and so on and so forth. 16 now I can pick up. Yes. So I get three more channels using the small antenna. And I can also adjust the direction of the small channel to pick up channel uh, 49. Let me show you why, how. So uh, let me uh, remove this. I think it should be somewhere here. See, this is uh, channel 49.1. I may not be, oops, <laughs> everything's falling apart, but anyway. Uh, okay. See? So I need to move it all the way from there to here in order to get this channel. But then not, it's not just uh, channel 49 when I also get channel 49 too. But anyway, um, using a smaller antenna, I'll be able to pick up a maximum of five more channels. So uh, I don't know what you think. Um, if you want to have more channels, you build another antenna and spend six boat bucks uh, for the, uh, for the uh, switch. That's it. So if you have any questions, please leave a message uh, downstairs. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to explain everything. I'm not in electrical engineering, but I'm, well, I know basic physics. It's just simple physics. Uh, you can use a lot of uh, high level mathematics like, like Maxwell's equation and so on and so forth, but then the real world is different. Maxwell equation Maxwell equations only work for the very simple cases like the dipolar, uh, the bipolar antenna, and so on and so forth. But this is not okay. This is uh, complicated. You you end up with a lot of very difficult partial differential equations if you know what it is. <laughs> Most of the partial differential equations you can solve. Uh, you can get a sol uh, analytical solution. So um, don't worry about it. <laughs> anyway, uh, see you next time. Bye.